There's something which is dragging down Tesla's stock. There seems to be lots of overhang and I think it's also um, yeah, dragging along NEO with it. And in this video, I will talk about the underlying issue. So it's important for both NEO as well as Tesla investors. And in my case, I'm invested in both. If you look at the Tesla chart here, you'll see that, um, well, Tesla is really caught up in these kind of downtrending lines here and movements. And it's currently, as we're speaking, as I'm recording this, um, trading around 695 US dollars, which is exactly the break even point for the S&P 500. If you remember, Tesla got included in the S&P 500, which means that fund managers have to, um, yeah, that was back then uh, in 2021, which means that fund managers uh, need to buy Tesla shares actually. And at that point in time, they started buying it. So it means um, every fund manager is right now not green nor red on Tesla stock, um, most likely. And um, well, it seems that Tesla just can't get and break out of this channel right now. And so, um, yeah, it's kind of sluggish. It's down 2% right now. And this is interesting. Neo is also down um, in the red, maybe taking a little bit of a breather of having uh, a really steep run up recently. But it's interesting to see, of course, like also Axpong, Li Auto, they're up quite a bit these days. And uh, that's possibly on news that uh, China is thinking about um, extending their subsidies for EVs and many other policy uh, improvements for EVs that are looking good. Uh, China's opening up actually Tesla, Giga, Shanghai is doing quite well. But I think one of the overhangs, uh, which I think is dragging down Tesla, especially today and NIO along with it, is this news here that Musk has called that Tesla's Berlin and Austin plants are money furnaces and uh, because they are still in the startup stage. So meaning they are not up and uh, ramped uh, production that they have an output which is significant enough for covering the cost. And um, so this is at the same time an advantage of Tesla, but it's also a downside uh, of Tesla and comparing NIO against it. This is actually why I like NIO, why I think, why I think NIO is um, yeah, also a very different business model than Tesla because NIO is not owning their factories. So this has some disadvantages such as um, Tesla is producing at a very nice um, uh, yeah, margin and scalability there. So they, because they own every process in the factory and they can optimize it to the very last bit and they are um, very innovative, inventing new processes of how electric cars being built, but frankly also using cheaper material than, for example, NIO. But this is why Tesla is very successful with very high margins, um, why they have a deep vertical integration and why also, frankly, Tesla is scaling up currently much, much faster than NIO, which has, of course, its um, initial stages of um, yeah, issues there with ramping up production, not going as fast as many of us has anticipated and hoped for. Whereas Tesla really, if you look in this S curve or in this growth curve of startups, Tesla is really in this acceleration phase, right? NIO is not there yet, but you know, Tesla has to spend lots of capital expenditure in order to get there. They need to actually invest in those factories which they own. And it's costing billions and billions of US dollars. And this is um, currently an issue for Tesla. And I think a, a huge overhang because uh, we will now have a quarter in which um, Shanghai was locked down for quite some time. So the output wasn't as big. And at the same time, they had only those factories which are starting to ramp with Austin and Berlin, uh, but not contributing a lot to profits, uh, to profits and um, uh, output. Uh, and so there might be a sort of financial overhang, uh, reduced margins also because of inflation on top of that. So lots of issues there for Tesla. And in comparison to that, NIO has a much, much leaner model. So they're also building the NIO Park currently, but it doesn't matter for NIO is this, if this is really sit, uh, sitting idle or not, because NIO Park is owned uh, by somebody else. Also in the case of the current factory, Factory One, how NIO is calling it, it's owned by JAC. So in case that there is a lockdown or 
um, you know, not as much capacity, then yes, at some point Neo will feel that because they always have to negotiate kind of the the throughput of the factory or kind of you know how much basically how many cars they are uh, wanting to produce. So it's having some sort of an effect. And of course, it's better for this um, factory to have a high occup uh, occupancy. Uh, but in the end, the, 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 the problem here is for Tesla that they have also to invest all of the money to get this factory up and going, whereas Neo doesn't have to do that. They can spend um, their money somewhere else let's say on building out infrastructure like battery swapping stations or marketing NEO houses. So this is where NEO's model is kind of, you know, concentrating more on their value propositions towards the consumer, but also where they have their, let's say, key resources, their key activities and key core know-how in terms of designing a brand, designing the cars, um, building an ecosystem, building a lifestyle, whereas Tesla is going another way. They are going uh, you know, the way of um, driving down cost as much as they can. And in the case that they're now not able to do that, this of course um, tells us that in this current stage, um, the business model isn't uh, working as well as it usually is. Um, so is this a problem in the long run? No, these factories will be scaling up very well. Um, I think Berlin is already also on the double shift. So these changes uh, will go away. There will be not an issue in the, in the future, but this issue need to go away. The overhang with the Twitter issue and acquisition, will Elon Musk have to sell more shares? This also needs to go away. And we need hopefully some sort of a rally in the S&P 500 in the US stocks, which have been uh, in a bear market and going down and all of this needs to happen for Tesla to start trading better and then hopefully also <laughs> yeah not dragging down NEO along with it because it seems that NEO is some sort of more correlated with Tesla. Of course we also have the sad news today about NEO um, and an, an accident that happened at the, the NEO facilities where uh, possibly um, two people have died, uh, which is very unfortunate. And um, yeah, I hope I wish the, the families well, but I'm not gonna further com um, comment on that. Um, things like this happen, that's a normal thing. Uh, this is not a channel for gossip or covering events like that, uh, but it, this shouldn't have an impact on, on the share price because basically nothing changes with the company and this is just an accident, right? Uh, so to me, it seems like the current, the, the, today's share price is much more correlated to uh, this overhang with Tesla. And um, yeah, that's kind of unfortunate because for both Tesla as well as for NIO, these are kind of important levels. They need to um, jump over some very important resistances right now. Those downtrend levels here for NIO as well, um, although it's been doing quite well, but it would be great if it can uh, jump even higher in order to break out of these downtrend channels because you know the next um, sell-off will come at some point in time if we don't get a relief rally right now in the S&P 500 um, then this may mean lower lows if we do get a relief rally and la later on only um, uh, you know and, and NEO and Tesla can advance further and later on we get a, a kind of a correction and another sell-off um, then we can make um, higher lows. That's what we want. But for now, it seems that there is um, some certain overhang that I've just explained. But it also shows the differences between NEO, which is much more about customer acquisition and customer lifetime value. Uh, so winning a customer, keeping it in the ecosystem and then make money as long as possible on that customer. Whereas in Tesla's case, it's all about making a sell and have high margins on all of these um, cars that are being sold. And that's working through very much um, focus on cost savings. And if that's not working, then obviously the stock also has an issue. Hope you find that one uh, interesting. Thank you guys for watching and see you in the next one.